Good evening. From the nation's capital, I'm Daniel Prusilides, in for David Aiken. Well, we begin Battleground Ontario. In a moment, we will get an update on the coming budget challenge for the Ontario Liberal government from our Toronto Sun Queens Park Bureau Chief Antonella Artuso. But before we hop over to Toronto, here with me in studio right now is Straight Talk contributor Rebecca Thompson. This is an, a very interesting time in Ontario politics, kind of dicey for the government. Oh yeah, absolutely, because what we're seeing is that Premier Kathleen Wynne is throwing punches back at the opposition, specifically the Ontario PCs. Uh, she's seeking $2 million in damages as part of her libel suit against Ontario PC leader, leader Tim Hudak and his energy critic uh, Lisa McLeod over these accusations that Premier Wynne uh, was responsible and involved in the deletion of records related to the gas plant scandal, cancelling gas plants which cost Ontarians $1.1 billion. So uh, it's what we're seeing right now is that Premier Wynne does not want to st step down. Uh, she's willing to take, uh, to take on this fight with even more vigour, even though she's seen a dive in the polls of late as a result of what the Ontario Liberals are going through with the uh, ongoing saga of the gas plants. Now the police are involved, uh, potentially you know, considering a breach of trust charges against former Dalton McGuinty's chief of staff for being involved in, in the deletion of records and the, uh, uh, and the deletion of these 24 uh, computers that were in Premier Wynne's office just before uh, she became Premier last year. So it, it's a back and forth that we will continue to see um, become even more aggressive. All right, stand by, Rebecca. Thank you for that. Let's bring in Antonella Artuso now from the Ontario Legislature for the latest on political developments in the province and the prospects for a spring election. Welcome to the show, Antonella. We've got a budget coming May 1st, is it? Absolutely, on May 1st. Circle that on your calendar. Now, Finance Minister Charles Sousa has said that he is going to include all kinds of items in this budget that both the PCs and the New Democrats will like, even if they like the, the items in the budget. How likely do you think it is that they'll like the entire package? Well, uh, that's a very good question. They have said that there will be things in that budget that the NDP will like will the, and the Tories will like. However, usually when one party finds something they like, the other party doesn't <laughs> like it. That's how it's worked out. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Minister Sousa puts a poison pill in his budget or a sweetener for Andrea Horvath. Uh, make no mistake, uh, he may talk about the PCs, but really this is all about NDP leader Andrea Horvath and whether she's prepared to uh, support the budget. Uh, she's under pressure from the labor community uh, to look for something in that budget to support. They're, they're not interested in a uh, PC majority in Ontario, but uh, at the same time, she's also under pressure after all these scandals to uh, walk away from the Liberals at this point. It's been interesting to watch the Ontario Liberals lately because on the one hand you've got this budget that's coming, that's obviously a very important document for the province and for voters. Recently we had the Premier outline transit plans and transit funding talking about tens of billions of dollars along with the revenue tools that that would also include and tomorrow the Liberals are going to introduce their rural issues uh, plan which might indicate that they are almost in campaign shape, it seems, trying to cover all the bases ahead of possibly seeing the government fall in May. Yes. Well, whether it's up to Andrea or not, the Liberals are planning for an election, no question about it. Um, the clock starts ticking on May 1st. Within 12 sessional days, they have to have a confidence vote. Uh, Kathleen Wynne has taken a very different tone this time around than she did in her first budget last year. Uh, there are insults heading, heading the way of Andrea Horvath and the NDP and the Tories. She's taken a much stronger tone. And so, yes, I think very much they think that they are on the campaign trail. Um, and now we're just waiting to see what Andrea Horvath thinks. And, and I've got to think that one of the issues that the Liberals don't want to talk about, but I suspect the NDP will want to talk about it, not to mention the PCs, is energy prices in Ontario, electricity prices <laughs> in Ontario. Uh, if you live yes. in Ottawa, as I do, you got a note not too long ago saying how much your electricity bill is going to go up, and it's not pretty. 
We just heard today, uh, just uh, within hours, uh, that the electricity prices are on their way up again. The OEB has approved a, an increase in prices as of May 1st, time of use prices. It's not huge. It's $2.83 for the average customer every month, but it's on top of a long line of increasing electricity costs. And throw in the fact that uh, natural gas prices are going up as well. Yes, I think the Liberals are going to have a very difficult time not talking electricity prices when everybody else, not just the opposition parties, but everybody else wants to talk about it. Yeah, it's probably one of those issues that will show up uh, at the doorstep whenever there is a campaign. Thank you very much, Antonella. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, Rebecca, now you've been listening to, to all of that, and it's interesting to see this, this budget come down. Hey, we'll have something that the PCs like, but they can't seriously be courting the Conservatives on the one hand with a budget and suing the, the leader for defamation on the other. No, we know that the Ontario PCs have rejected Liberal budgets in the past, uh, especially since it's a, the Ontario Liberals won a minority in 2011. They, they haven't been able to get the Ontario PCs uh, to jump on board. Uh, but what the PCs will continue to say is this is a tax and spend Liberal government. They're going to say this during the budget period in the next few weeks. They're going to say it if there is an upcoming election because what we do know is uh, Premier Wynne and her Finance Minister Charles Sousa have announced in the past couple of weeks that they're going to be spending a huge amount of money on a huge amount of new initiatives uh, and as well as you just mentioned with the 50 billion dollar infrastructure plan that they have committed to moving forward on they're going to have to introduce new taxes or tolls of some sort so uh, we know that uh, you know there's no mystery here this is pretty much an, uh, a tax and spend government and the big question given Ontario's financial state economic state which is in the you know in, in, in which isn't doing very well at all, uh, is whether or not un Ontarians uh, will accept this. How can the NDP support a budget, given all of the trouble that the Ontario Liberals have caused Ontario with a number of scandals? And, and also, uh, Premier Wynne is not elected. Uh, she became leader uh, just over a year ago, and people are chomping at the bit in Ontario to, to actually test her in an election because she is an unelected premier. And one of the issues, certainly, that, that analysts and, and, and politicians, I'm sure, and probably voters will be looking at whenever the budget uh, is, is, is revealed on, on May 1st, is going to be, will they be able to maintain, credibly maintain their timelines to have a balanced budget by 2017-18? Because even as the federal government is on the cusp of balancing its budget, Ontario is uh, considerably behind uh, when it comes to that issue. Well, yeah, it, it is behind. And, you know, when you, you're speaking in huge terms, a $280 billion debt, for example, which is, can, which is Ontario's largest debt ever and one of Canada's highest debt, I believe, next to Quebec, um, you know, th these are huge terms. But when you actually speak about how this influences your hydro bill or your energy bill, when you really dumb it down to the very, very small things that people know on a day-to-day -day basis, um, then it, it matters to people, it concerns people. Ontario has uh, one of the highest energy rates in North America. Businesses have been squawking because it's too high. They've been leaving Ontario because energy prices are too high. Um, and everybody knows this. This doesn't bode well for the Ontario Liberals. The, the narrative that is weaved for the Ontario Liberals uh, isn't that optimistic. Uh, and so they, they have a tough road ahead, not to mention the fact that they've been tested in recent by-elections and have lost some key seats that they were hoping to hold on to or win. Uh, and so if, if the proof is in the pudding, then they could really face a problem uh, in this upcoming election. But for the NDP, uh, they could also face a problem if they actually choose to support the Liberals because yet again Andrea Horvath is seen to be propping up a government that people wonder you know what maybe it's time to go to the polls. Yeah and, and when it comes to the energy issue it's kind of fu funny the way it works out because energy electricity prices specifically will start to ramp up um, maybe not all that dramatically but they'll start to go up just as we start to crank up the air conditioners uh, in Ontario <laughs> which of course run on electricity as far as the natural gas prices go we won't really feel that pinch until uh, maybe September or October yeah well absolutely I just heard the other day for example that there was a company that refuses to hire summer interns because they can't afford their electricity bills anymore and they're really wow. cash strapped so it you know it's a problem all right Rebecca Thompson thank you thank you